Well, <clears throat> it's time for a, a story for the youngins, I hope, anyway. And, and by the way, when I went to uh, Publix yesterday to pick up something from there, there was a lady who was uh, responsible for uh, letting a certain number of people in at a time. And while I was standing there waiting, she told me a joke. And it was just kind of one of those jokes at the end of the day. And so I thought I would share it with you. It may not make any sense to you, but maybe it will. Anyway, she asked me, have you heard about the shampoo crisis on the island of Jamaica? And I thought for a moment, and I said, no, I haven't heard of a shampoo crisis on the island of Jamaica. She said, it's dreadful. Terrible. It's dreadful. Terrible. You may have to think about that. But anyway, I thought it was cute. I thought I would share it with you. So today we're reading about Winnie the Pooh. And this is chapter three, in which Pooh and Piglet go hunting and nearly catch a woozle. What's a woozle? Well, maybe we'll find out. The piglet lived in a very grand house in the middle of a beech tree, and the beech tree was in the middle of the forest. And the piglet lived in the middle of the house. Next to his house was a piece of broken board which had Trespassers W on it. When Christopher Robin asked the piglet what it meant, he said it was his grandfather's name and had been in the family for a long time. Christopher Robin said, you couldn't be called trespassers, W. And Piglet said, yes, you could, because his grandfather was, and it was short for trespassers, Will, which was short for trespassers, William. And his grandfather had two names in case he lost one, trespassers, after an uncle, and William after trespassers. I've got two names, said Christopher Robin carelessly. Well, there you are. That proves it, said Piglet. One fine wintry's day, when Piglet was brushing away the snow in front of his house, he happened to look up, and there was Winnie the Pooh. Pooh was walking round and round in a circle, thinking... And there's a picture of Winnie the Pooh walking around and around, thinking, or something else. And when Piglet called to him, just he just went on walking. Hello, Piglet. What are you doing? Hunting, said Pooh. Hunting what? Tracking something, said Winnie the Pooh very mysteriously. Tracking what? said Piglet, coming closer. That's just what I ask myself. I ask myself, what? What do you think you'll answer? I have to wait until I catch up with it, said Winnie the Pooh. Now look here. He pointed to the ground in front of him. What do you see there? Tracks, said Piglet. Paw tracks. He gave a little squeak of excitement. Oh, Pooh, do you think it's a, it's a, it's a, a woozle? It may be said Pooh. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. You can never tell with paw marks.
With these few words, he went on tracking, and Piglet, after watching him for a minute or two, ran after him. Winnie the Pooh had come to a sudden stop and was bending over the tracks in a puzzled sort of way. What's the matter? asked Piglet. It's a very funny thing, said Bear. But there seem to be two animals now. This, whatever it was, has been joined by another, whatever it is, and the two of them are now proceeding in company. Would you mind coming with me, Piglet, in case they turned out turn out to be hostile animals? Piglet scratched his ear in a nice sort of way and said that he had nothing to do until Friday and would be delighted to come in case it really was a woozle. You mean in case it really is two woozles? said Winnie the Pooh, and Piglet said that anyhow he had nothing to do until Friday, so off they went together. There was a small sp spiny of arch trees just there, and it seemed as if the two woozles, if that is what they really were, had been going round this spinery, so round this spinery went Pooh and Piglet after them. Piglet passing the time by telling Pooh what his grandfather Trespasser W. had done to remove stiffness after tracking, and how his grandfather Trespasser W. had suffered in his later years from shortness of breath and other matters of interest, and Pooh wondering what a grandfather was like, and if perhaps this was two grandfathers they were now after, and if so, whether he would be allowed to take one home and keep it, and what Christopher Robin would say, and still the tracks went on in front of them. Suddenly, Winnie the Pooh stopped and pointed excitedly in front of him. Look! What? said Piglet with a jump, and then to show that he hadn't been frightened, he jumped up and down once or, once or twice in an exercising sort of way. The tracks, said Pooh, a third animal has joined the other two. Pooh, cried Piglet. Do you think it is another whistle? No, said Pooh, because it makes different marks. It is either two woozles and one, as it might be, whistle, or two, as it might be, whistles and one, if so it is, woozle. Let us continue to follow them. So they went on, feeling just a little nervous now, in case the three animals in front of them were of hostile, hostile intent. And Piglet wished very much that his grandfather T.W. were there, instead of elsewhere, and Pooh thought it how nice it would be if they met Christopher Robin suddenly, but quite accidentally, and only because he liked Christopher Robin so much. And then, all of a sudden, Winnie the Pooh stopped again and licked the tip of his nose in a cooling manner, for he was feeling more hot and anxious than ever before in his life. There were four animals in front of them. Do you see Piglet? Look at their tracks. Three, as it were, woozles, and one, as it was, whistle. Another woozle has joined them. And so it seemed to be. There were the tracks, crossing over each other here, getting muddled up with each other there, but quite plainly every now and then the tracks of the four sets of paws. I think, said Piglet, when we, he had licked the tip of his nose, too, and found that it brought very little comfort, I think that I might just have remembered something. I have just remembered something that I forgot to do yesterday and shan't be able to do tomorrow, so I suppose I really ought to go back and do it now. Well, do it this afternoon and I'll come with you, said Pooh. It isn't the sort of thing you can do 
in the afternoon, said Piglet quickly. It's a very particular morning thing that has to be done in the morning, and if possible between the hours of... What would you say the time was? About twelve, said Winnie the Pooh, looking at the sun. Between, as I was saying, the hours of twelve and twelve-five. Oh, really, dear old Pooh, if you'll excuse me. What's that? Pooh looked up in the sky, and then, as he heard the whistle again, he looked up into the branches of a big oak tree, and there he saw a friend of his. Ah, oh, then, you'll be all right, said Piglet. You'll be quite safe with him. Goodbye. And he trotted off home as quickly as he could, very glad to be out of all danger again. Christopher Robin came slowly down the tree. Silly old bear, he said. What were you doing? <clears throat> First, you went around the spiny twice by yourself, and then Piglet ran after you, and you went ar around again together, and then you were just going around a fourth time. Wait a moment, said Winnie the Pooh, holding up his paw. He sat down and thought, in the most thoughtful way he could think. Then he fitted his paw into one of the tracks, and then he scratched his nose twice and stood up. Yes, said Winnie the Pooh. I see now, said Winnie the Pooh. I have been foolish and deluded, said he, and I am a bear with no brain at all. You're the best bear in all the world, said Christopher Robin soothingly. Am I? said Pooh hopefully, and then he brightened up suddenly. Anyhow, he said, it's nearly lunchtime. And so he went home for it. And that's the story for today. I love you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.